Fran Buckley on her way to see a client in a low-income neighborhood of West Chicago. As a community nurse, Buckley is on the front line of healthcare. She's also part of a national experiment to reduce the number of babies dying from cot death, or SIDS, Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. Buckley is visiting the home of a foster mother and the child she cares for. The baby girl was born addicted to crack cocaine. The nurse warns mothers about Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. It takes more than 2,000 small lives in the United States each year and is the leading cause of death for babies. Because Michelle is African-American and was born prematurely, she's considered a high risk for SIDS. You need to position the baby. She's so alert. A position her whenever she's asleep, mm -hmm. or when she, yeah. even at nap, nap time, or even at night time. You position her on her back. Okay. Okay. That's and that helps. With a far that's higher incidence of SIDS no deaths among African American oh, no. babies, okay. Barkley knows position only too well how reason. families are devastated. It's sad, and sometimes you cry, sometimes you cry with the mothers, but you have to be understanding, and you have to be a little stronger than you want to at the times, but it's, it helps. And, you know, and a lot of them are very, very grateful, you know, that we're there, you know, to help them in their times of need, because we know that there's going to be some tragedies along the way, but, you know, you, you find comfort in knowing that you've done some good along the way anyway. Mm -hmm. Despite decades of research, SIDS remains a medical mystery. A perfectly healthy baby goes to sleep, stops breathing, and dies. Doctors know that putting a baby to sleep on its back greatly reduces the risk. When the United States launched its Back to Sleep initiative a decade ago, deaths dropped by nearly 40%, but not among African Americans. So a year ago, the national government set out to address the disproportionate number of African American babies dying. When we looked at the national data, there were huge disparities. And looking at Chicago, which was chosen as a pilot, uh, babies here were nine times more likely to die if they were African American than if they were white. And so we were a good pilot site. Ryan Michael Monaghan was three and a half months old when he died during his morning nap. He was exposed to none of the risk factors associated with SIDS. He was asleep on his back, on a firm mattress, nowhere near secondhand smoke. When the babysitter went to check on him after 20 minutes, Ryan was dead. That was eight years ago, but Ryan's mother, Moira, says parents never get over the loss. The first month after your child dies, you basically don't even really know what happened to you. Um, it takes a long time to really start, for your mind to start to come around to grips with the fact that, yeah, this really happened. Once you do start to get a sense of that it really did happen, uh, you know, then, then all the emotions really start to hit you. Ryan's baby book begins like that of any other infant. His birth was normal, his development was fine, hitting all the early milestones expected of babies. His mother writes that he looked like his father at birth. His growth chart records a healthy start in life. His mother remembers her baby gained weight steadily, but suddenly the growth chart stops. SIDS can't be predicted, and Ryan's pictures provide no hint of the tragedy to come. Because there is no explanation, you're always searching, searching, searching for what could that explanation possibly be. And there are a lot of spiritual questions that come up for people. Um, often you have to really sit down and say, well, you know, why did God let this happen to me? Ryan's picture is nearby. Inspiration for Monaghan, who now works for a SIDS charity, educating caregivers, counseling bereaved parents, and raising money for research. Some of the funding ends up in Chicago at Rush Presbyterian St. Luke's Hospital. At the high-tech sleep laboratory, researchers are studying infants considered at high risk for SIDS. Susan Hauptman, a respiratory therapist, helps Tatiana undress her 10-month-old son. The young mother's agreed to her son taking part in a sleep monitoring experiment. The Vouzier Davis has stopped breathing twice, and doctors want to see what his body is doing while he sleeps. There are myriad leads, tubes, and wires to be attached. Care must be taken so they don't fall off as the baby rolls or wiggles while he naps. Each sensor leads to sophisticated, expensive, state-of-the-art equipment. Doctors remain confounded by SIDS. Even autopsies can't explain the syndrome. 
but by studying a detailed exact record of Debusier's sleep, they're hoping to find some clues. If the baby has any erratic breathing, they'll be able to see how his nervous system, his heart, temperature, and other vitals react. Too bad. What do you think about that? Oh, you seem very, very cosmopolitan about it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. There we go. So much of Sids okay. remains a mystery. Doctors know Maybe. that putting babies to sleep on their backs um, without too many covers reduces the incidence of death, but they don't know why. That will make things uh, a little easier, easier for him. A leading theory suggests that babies who die of SIDS have an abnormality in their brain stem. While all babies have brief periods of sleep apnea, when breathing stops for a few seconds, most babies can rouse themselves. Doctors think the brain stem problem in SIDS babies means they naturally don't start breathing again. Good boy. Well, we'll try those once he falls asleep. Hauptmann dims the lights and takes up a position on the other side of the one-way mirror. The therapist can watch the baby through the glass or through one of three video cameras recording his movements. The video and the vital statistics from the monitors will give doctors a complete picture of the baby's sleep. They can analyze the data, compare it with other nights and other babies, and it may provide clues about what's caused the little guy to stop breathing in the past. These four signals at the top, the two of them are each eye, and then um, two on the head, and this is an EMG that we place on the chin, a couple leads, and these channels give us information about sleep staging. Studying babies who are known to have had problems with breathing may provide a valuable lead for doctors. A promising area of research has opened up recently looking at genetic clues, and doctors are confident they won't always be mystified by SIDS. With SIDS, there are a lot of associated risk factors, but there are babies that do everything right, that are on their back to sleep, they're not overheated, there's no smoking, they've gotten prenatal care, everything, and they still die. And for those families, they've been struggling very hard with an explanation. And as we began to pursue this genetic piece further, we said that might be the explanation for some of these deaths. All right. Alan Brown is a triplet. Okay. Yeah, this one on. Let's put this one around your belly. He and his brother and sister were born two months early. When he's ready to go home, he'll leave the hospital with a portable sleep monitor, like the one Silvestri is attaching. The machine's cables monitor the tiny baby's vital signs and bleep if something goes wrong. An alarm sounds if he stops breathing or if his body isn't getting enough oxygen. Silvestri says it's frustrating and painful to have to admit to a bereaved parent that the medical profession has no idea why their child has died. As I've gotten older, I've kind of gotten more vehement in my passion for this, and we've seen a dramatic reduction in the number of babies that are dying. But in the United States, there's still a little over 2,000 babies dying each year, and it doesn't make sense to not have an explanation. Monitoring babies like Alan may provide that explanation. A number of studies are underway in the US and around the world, putting together pieces of the medical puzzle. Doctors hope that when these infants have their own babies, SIDS will no longer be the killer it is today.